Shalom Israel. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rekakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. <clears throat> and I want to get into this lesson, all right, based upon the scripture. As you see on the screen here, it says, Pride goes, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall, which goes into uh, was that? Proverbs 16 and 18. And that's of a truth. And this lesson was inspired um, today. I was thinking about this, uh, you know, uh, um, a woman I used to deal with. And um, basically, you know, we had to split apart because, you know, this the me being man of the Lord, me, you know, not being able to celebrate holidays and birthdays and all that, it was too tough for her. So therefore she had to leave. You know, and, um, you know, hey, you know, I was talking to a brother about it a while back. You know, he was even saying, well, hey, I, the Lord did that because, you know, he ain't fucking with her, basically. The Lord, the Lord hardened this, uh, this woman's heart that I was dealing with because he's not dealing with her, man. You know, in so many words, I believe that's, you know, roughly paraphrasing. He didn't say exactly like that, but. In so many words, that's what he said, you know. And now, you know, suddenly, you know, I'm, I'm finally really starting to understand what the brother was talking about, man. You know, because, of, hey, everything happens, you know, all, you know, everything happens, Salaka. Everything happens so that we can, at the end of the day, give all praise, down and glory to Yahweh, Bashan, Yahweh, Shai. You know, and, um, you know, I still to this day think about. You know, well, I was dating her for X amount of uh, years. Then out of nowhere, shit went south. You know? But, hey, everything, like I said, always goes back to giving praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You know? Because who knows, man? She could have, you know, I could have got too entangled with her and fell out the truth. Or however, the, however it may went, the most high, you know what I'm saying? Uh, hey, he showed his power. You know, and that's uh, you know, that's something we gotta uh, remember, man. Not to have pride, just but hey, just to believe in the process. And these women that's dealing with us, they gotta understand that too. You know, to understand and believe in the process. All right, and that the Lord is dealing, man. You know, because for men, for a woman, in this earth to find the man of the Lord. Which I'm not bragging, I'm just saying, Lord willing, I am. Alright, Lord willing, I continue until the end. But for a woman in this earth to find a man of the Lord, hey, that's, hey, the scriptures say, a man of the Lord shall be as precious as, precious as fine gold, even the, the uh, gold of Ophir. You know? So for you to, um, to leave a man of the Lord, you know, which ultimately it was the Heavenly Father, like I said, it's, it's to his, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's to his praise. All right. You know, but that just shows you that the Lord really don't like you, man. All right. Because the end of you not following the Lord. Or, you know, just a woman following a man of the Lord, which is basically the same thing. All right. It's to your destruction. All right. Just like, you know, when you look into the times of Pharaoh. All right. Where he didn't follow the Moses. He didn't follow Moses and, and letting our people go. So guess what? He was destroyed. All right. Lot's wife didn't follow Lot's instruction not to look back. So guess what? She was turned into a pillar of salt. You know, to this present day, Esau is not following the prophets of the Lord's advice by letting them go free. So guess what's going to happen to him? He's going to be destroyed. OK, so that's how it goes, man. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. OK. And that's what people don't understand, man. They're going to fall, you know, because I did a lesson yesterday uh, basically going into seasons change, um, you know, abruptly. All right. Now, you know, it seems nice and the weather's nice. Everything seems good over here in America. But soon enough, a famine is going to come. Martial law is going to come. And guess what? You're going to need protection. OK, the elder, uh, the elder apostle. um, um. Sakharan, he just went into the book of Psalms 91. 
All right. Which is scripture say a man shall be a covert from the wind. All right. And if a woman follows that man, she will, she will receive that covering. But if not, she's going to receive the pestilence. She's going to receive the plague. She's going to receive martial law and all the things that comes with it, man. She's going to receive the famine, man. And while she receives a chip, which most likely she will because she don't see a way out and women don't have faith, then she's going to receive a nuclear missile. Okay. So pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Okay. You know, and that's what these women that are with men, that are with men of the Lord. All right. Which, you know, as I go into this lesson, it actually goes into, you know, all walks of life for those who have pride, man. Those who have pride against the men of the Lord, whether it be Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, the woman that deal with the men of the Lord, two thirds that misuse the prophets of the Lord. They're all going to be destroyed. Okay. So. This is uh, Exodus. Chapter 14. Let me see. I guess I'll start at Exodus 14 and 17. And I behold, and I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. You know, and at the end of the day, the ones that you hate, the ones that you scoff against, those are the ones who you're going to praise, man. You know? Just like Pharaoh, man. The ones who he hated. You know what I'm saying? The, the power who he hated, you know, because when you read into the book of Exodus, the Lord, the Lord uh, power. All right. Spoke to Pharaoh through Moses that he was going to kill all the firstborn. OK, and he did it. You know, therefore, Pharaoh, yeah, he felt like he had to get revenge, man. You know, and also he didn't want to let Israel go because hey, we made Israel great. You know, when we read the beginning of this chapter, which I um, skipped through for the sake of time. But, you know, which actually, you know what? I'm going to read it real quick. This is Exodus chapter 14. Verse 4, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart. He said it once again, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? OK, because Israel were the ones that, that built the pyramids, man. So if they built the pyramids, which I still stand to this day, imagine how many how many other uh, great civilizations have they have they built, man? You know, but of course, like in this society, they don't get the credit for it. Okay, so jumping down to Exodus 14 and 17. And now behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon his, all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel removed and went behind them and the pillar of the cloud went before went from before their face and stood behind them and it came before the camp of Israel and the camp of Israel and the Slaki and it came before the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel and it was a cloud of darkness to them but it gave light by night to these all right 
which hey that's that's uh that's beautiful too man you know because the as it shows you too how you know the chariots are for our you know deliverance and for the heathen's destruction man like it says in uh revelation i mean no zachariah the fifth chapter this is the curse that go forth about the whole earth you know so that's just something i learned today too that and it was a cloud of darkness and it was a cloud and darkness to them but it gave light by night to these so that the one came not near the other all the night you know, so the, the chariot really, you know, Israel, it was a chariot separating Israel and Pharaoh as Israel was walking through the, uh, you know, the Red Sea, you know, fleeing uh, Pharaoh. And Moses stretched out his arm. Oh, no, Salakis. Okay, so this prior, prior to them going into the sea. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And Yahweh caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. And they made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, watch, Yahweh looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. And it took and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for Yahweh fight for them against the Egyptians. And Yahweh said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it. And Yahweh overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Okay. So point point blank. Hey, that's prime example, man. Pride goes before destruction. You know. But he, he you know, Pharaoh couldn't just let him go. Alright. And the Holy Spirit before fall. He had to follow him, man. You know? He couldn't just listen to the word of the Lord, you know. Or yeah, he couldn't just listen to the word of the Lord. All right, which came through a man of the Lord, you know, but he kept on, you know, kept on in his own folly, man. And that's how most of these people are, man. They can't stop being poor or for a woman to, or for a woman that meets a man of the Lord. She can't follow what he says. She got to do everything against him. So therefore, her end is going to be the same as Pharaoh's, man. Okay. This is the book of uh, Isaiah. I think it's 13. Bear with me. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 11. It was just a spirit because we had 13 minutes right now. And it says, and I will, uh, let me see. I, I'm going to start at 9, actually. Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. What is sin? It's sin is transgression of the law. All right? Which, through the spirit, us as being priests are the ones administering the law. Telling our people, okay, no, you know, it's wrong to get tattoos. It's wrong to eat pork from crab and lobster, you know. And the sinners are the one, all right, that go against the law, all right. So sinners transgress into the law, and the sinners are the ones that transgress the law. For the star, for the stars of heaven and the constellation thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the holiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even the man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Okay, so there you go, man. There's, there's going to be a juxtaposition in that day, man. 
Right now, we just look like ordinary men who people could just, you know, say what they want to, do what they want to. But in that day, the Lord is going to make a, 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 a contrast between those who serve the Lord and those who served him not. Okay? And that's going to be a blessing, man. Actually, you know what? As I say that, this is Malachi 3. And, uh... Fourteen. It says, uh, ye have said it is vain to serve God, and what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts, and now we call the proud happy, yea, they that work wickedness and are set up, yea, they that tempt God are even delivered in this life, okay, because the wicked is ruling, therefore wickedness is winning. Then they that fear Yahweh speak often one to another. And Yahweh hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him, before him, for them that fear Yahweh and that sought upon his name. You know? So this is a the after the after aftermath, if you will, you know, in the kingdom. And they shall be mine. You know, well, actually, you could uh, even apply it to now, man, because the prophets of the Lord, you know, are written in the Bible. You know, the faith that they had in Yahweh Bashin, Yahweh Shah, and the wicked, you know, it always, even when you check the Bible, the wicked kings, they never ruled for a long time. The wicked people, they always got destroyed, you know. So we always, there's always uh, examples, man, you know. And what shall the end of them be? Hey, that dude, that, that follow the same ways, man, you know. Hey, Babylon's going, this place is going to get destroyed. This, but, hey, it, it pushes gay pride, man. You know, that's another way we see this place is going to get destroyed, man. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah, as the scriptures say, was set forth as, as an example to all those that afterwards should live ungodly in Jude 1 and 7. You know, so pride go before destruction. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, for them that humbled themselves and listened, actually listened to the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I will make up my jewels and I will spare them. As Isaiah 13 and 12. A golden wedge of old fur. As a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth God. Alright. Normally when you serve someone you bow down to them. You answer to them. And him that serveth him not. Okay, hey man. So with that, be aware, man. Stay humble. Follow your how Hashem how was shy. And if you're a woman, all right, that that have a man of the Lord, hey, you better follow what he says, man. You know, of course, in righteousness. You know, hey. But with that, shalom to the elect.